We're back on The Magic of the Musicals. It's Alex Barfield talking to the big stars. And a lady who it's always nice to interview is Tracy Bennett. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. It's good to see you. I'm trying to think the times we spoke, because I think this is the third time. I know you were in Hairspray. We spoke then. Mm. And was it Les Mis before that? Yes, we- it was. Um, you've done everything. You've had every major role. <laughs> you've been in every show. You are Mrs. West End, aren't you, really? I seem to have done everything in the rep, and that's, of course, where you learn your skills, such as mine is, <laughs> but <laughs> big or small. And I'm very grateful for that because I think psychologically the West End might have shredded me had I come in too early and too young. And you're a particularly unique thing that you're a personality in the West End. There aren't that many of those, are there? What do you mean? (laughs) Well, you come on and you steal the stage and you know what you're doing and you're not like the chorus girls at the back that all look the same and they all sound the same. You've got a great voice, a unique voice and just a personality. I don't know what that means. I suppose if we were going to be crass, we'd say it was the X Factor. But that sounds a bit cheesy, doesn't it? Well, it does, yeah. And I, I, I honestly don't see myself like that. I'm a chorus girl in my head. I've, I, I'll, you know, I'll always be part of a team. I serve the piece, not myself. I think as you get older, by definition, something goes in osmosis-wise that you have a technique or you're aware of lights suddenly, which I never used to be. Because <laughs> you just go on and you do your thing, you know, but you have to link it, I think. You have to link that technique and that experience with how to work a crowd or basically I'm a big thing on serving the piece at all times never myself I don't have that kind of ego and I think that's wrong to have it but if anybody else wants to have it that's up to them mm. they can stick it and <laughs> when you're in the West End is there really any room for you to have an ego because there's a lot to get on with there's eight shows a week to get out and there's a whole team to work too how long would you last if you did think that this was the epitome well, of show business I think you know people who do have uh, we all have an ego you know even people who don't have a job you know we all have a a kind of id thing and that's what keeps you getting up in the morning i suppose but i mean i'm talking about the type of ego where somebody thinks they're better than somebody else and that's just not on at all they think they're better than the writers or the directors or the chorus girls and actually that does hinder what serving the piece is and um, i think there's a responsibility to the audience and to the writers to just serve the piece get on with it for the pleasure of them otherwise why don't they just stay in their bathroom and do it for themselves do you know what i mean and when i think that superiority thing that sometimes comes across in any walk of life i mean i used to be a tax officer and you'd get it in the office so i'm not slagging off performers I mean, it, it's a type of human being i think um i just think that sometimes that's pandered to in our world because it is commercial money you're talking about so people have to think that they either should be pampered otherwise they'll walk and that i think they stretch their boundary and it takes a very strong producer to say oi you know knock it off you're doing it for the audience and you know somebody's coming down from scotland even or abroad to see a show that's the show they want to see and then there's the other side of it when they do want to come and see their favorite celeb so You know what I mean? It's that kind of fine line between what do they think you are and what image do they think you have? And I've seen people lose it with not knowing who they are and becoming the image that they think they've got for the image that the public think they have. Do you get me? I do, yeah, because it's it's a vicious circle, that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you just, you know, you can see people losing total reality and Mm. their groundedness and I just think it's all about values and how your parents have brought you up basically Mm. (laughs) I think we're all the same and get on with it and what I love about you as well is your voice and your accent and you haven't lost that you're true to where you come from in the shows I've seen you in unfortunately you're playing characters with with (laughs) accents so we don't get to hear that have you ever been told uh, work on the voice Um, we we need a bit more of uh, the Queen's English television wise yeah and certain plays yeah, I mean, I remember being picked for something called Joking Apart and the casting director rang my agent and said, well, we don't know how to say this, but we need Tracy to play a Tracy because the character was called Tracy. And I was like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and I thought she was some chav, you know, but she was actually very posh from Chelsea. And I'm like, sorry. And she went, look, I know you're a character actress and can you get to grips with the voice? And I do have a voice teacher and I do do my research and... If I'm playing Hungarian, I'll go to the embassy and get spoken to and taped, you know, by a Hungarian. And then I'll get a voice teacher to tell me where the tongue sits and little tricks like that. And and if I'm no good, at least I know I've tried my best to be consistent in in my no goodness. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I do the best of my no goodness I can. Like I'm just doing this French thing with Lacage and uh, it's kind of French 
via Bombay and Wales. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as it's consistent with that, you know, I really try and hit, like, in, instead of saying, who are you? You know, you go, who are you? Ooh, they don't say the who. So it's just tiny little things like that. And if you just plop them in every now and again, there's no point really doing your heading over it. But yeah, the RP thing, I, I have done it. And, and it's funny, a lot of actors talk about so-called posh RP people playing northerners. You'll very rarely get it the other way around. And I don't know why that is. Do you know why that is? <laughs> no, I, I don't. And I still think that we're riddled with class in this country, aren't we? And especially it's in the fine, theatre It's fine, I'm over well. it. And you can't get angry about it because you'd slash your wrist. But, <laughs> well, you would, wouldn't you? So you just go, oh, OK, that, that's the way it is. And you just have to be happy with your lot and get on with it because we could always look at the other side and say, I want that and that's not fair mm. and that's not fair. Nothing's fair. So if you can get yourself t to grips with what you think is fair that you want to give out, as it were, as a person, then that's what you should be looking at. Because, you know, even politicians politicians start pulling instead of talking about their manifesto they're too busy slagging off the other manifesto and you're like no I want to hear what yours is you know so you never hear the truth of anything and then you've done a lot of TV work as well there's obvious differences between theatre and TV which do you enjoy the most or is it nice to dip your toe into both I am blessed with that I, I really am blessed with that and I often go my god thank you you know to somebody but then again I have been brave enough to turn things down to wait for that and when all my mates have been earning thousands of pounds a week you know in the west end or whatever i've i've said no hoping that that bravery something like a sitcom will come up and you know what it has and and i thank something for that in answer to your question specifically i i i would always say theater a it's harder b it's a big discipline well, it's all discipline, but it's just a different discipline and it is like the army. And I like that discipline. I don't know why. I, I like that discipline. And sometimes you go off the rails with it because you go, oh, I'll just get drunk tonight. I can't be asked. But it, <laughs> that's after the show. Do you know what I mean? You just have to have a blowout every now and again. But as I'm getting older, I'm going, oh, God, eight a week is really <laughs> roasting. You know, you just want to go out for dinner sometimes. And and it's really hard in summer when you're coming in off the bus and everybody's in the wine bar by the river and you're going, oh, I hate all of you. <laughs> but I've chosen that gig and it is vocational and it's my choice and I have to take responsibility for that because then I can have a drink by the river afterwards, you know. It It, it is hard because I have lived a normal life in the, in the office. Um, so telly is... Easier when you get older, stamina-wise. But it, again, that's different discipline in terms of you can wait all day, but you seriously have to be on it when it's your turn. You seriously have to keep yourself primed for those two minutes because that level of concentration with like a massive scene that you might be doing, like a crying thing or you, you're playing a murder and you have to really come up with the subtleties of the lead up to that because it's not in chronological order sometimes you have to really do your homework where you are mentally and, and emotionally and try and do your homework to help the directors so that they can get on with their technical stuff you can't be going well, where am i now and what do you think and you know try and do as much as you can um so that's the hard bit with that but it easy it's easier you know getting in a car and Having your hair done then. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to learn your lines, really, and kind of get on with it. But There's very little glamour in theatre at all, is there? Well, there's no glamour in an office, you know. I mean, I, I come into work, and when I, like I say, I used to work in the office, and the girls were immaculate. God love them. And I would always be the scruffy one trying to... Oh, can you be bothered curling your hair and putting your eyelashes on, you know, at like six in the morning? No. And, you know, I'd stick my glasses on and go in, and then I'd think, oh, God, I better raise my ball game here because they've all got skirts on and lovely blouses. Where do you find time to iron? You know, get your tracksuit on, but you can't. So that that's like a bit of glamour there with yourself in the office but nothing's glamorous and I don't know who thinks it is I think the perception if you ask the general public who's more who's living a more glamorous life the theatre actress or the lady in the office no, I think they, most they think it is and I think it's because there there are lots of, of opportunities for like do's you know but uh, certain people aren't even invited on those do's do you see what I'm saying it might be the lead that's invited to the do but there's a load of us that aren't invited to the Grosvenor every now and again. And so once you do get invited and then you don't, I mean, I've seen it on the street, you know, 
and it's funny that they all want you and then two years later that you don't get the invites and it just makes me laugh I mean I howl you know and I go oh yeah <laughs> whatever the free dresses have stopped coming and, and that's totally understandable <laughs> but when when you first get that that's what you think the glamour part is you know, until somebody ruins the dress and then they have to pay 20 grand back. <laughs> Suddenly it's all over. <laughs> so I have seen both sides and I'm glad I'm grounded with that with my family because you just have to laugh at it all and go, well, that was great at the time. I'll have it, thanks. I did get a bit of rage going, why are you offering me everything and why didn't you offer me anything before? But of course, that's the nature of the beast. It's a network thing where you help each other. Mm. You you play the game with the publicity of the show and they give you a free dress and get to the Grosvenor. There's the deal. End. Yep. Meanwhile, crack on with your job. Yeah, and it's not getting carried away with that. And you've done some amazing TV stuff. What have you enjoyed the most? I mean, things like Coro, or what, what do you enjoy doing? Ooh, I really have worked hard, and I, I don't think I'm gifted. There's a lot of gifted people that don't get the gig. But I have worked hard, and I've, I've tried to get better at things. And I think, I think that comes good long term. I, I hope it does. It seems to have. For, for certain people I've witnessed and, and certainly myself I've I, I still can't believe I get employed <laughs> because I've nothing to lose coming from where I'm from I've nothing to lose and so there's no there's been no fear I've always been a risk taker because I go well so what if I get it wrong it'll make me think well let's not do that again and I don't tend to limit myself I know I'm crap at restoration comedy I don't know why <laughs> I'm crap at pantomime I just don't get it I've tried it and that's why I can say it and I'm glad I tried it in the rep and had the guts enough to do it but I don't get it. I don't get the foppery of it. or And maybe I was too young to understand the research of it and what the style was. And every director has a different style. And maybe my style didn't suit that or whatever. I didn't feel comfortable doing it. Um, so, do you see what I mean? I, I don't mm. I don't feel that I should be here for the first, in the first place. But now I am here. I'm still excited about everything and I can't say what I like doing best. I think musical theatre is the hardest genre and people still laugh at it. You know, even like, sorry to talk about the X Factor and stuff, but bless Simon Cowell when he says, oh, well, you'll be, you'll be all right for the West End. And I, I go, well, they should be so lucky. Do mm. you know how difficult it is to do acting, singing, dancing every day and deal with the politics of a management and deal with the public and deal with your fellow colleagues and the wardrobe and the wigs. I mean, are you having a laugh that you think it's not a great medium to be in? It, it's the hardest of all. And and I'm thrilled that, you know, I'm not comfortable being a singer, but I, I get employed for musicals because I, I suppose there's a certain level of reality in me or something and I dance a bit and I play the piano, but. And I'm not comfortable with the singing, but because they've asked me to do it, I'll really try my best. You know what I'm saying? It seems to me a lot of the personality and the heart that we started off this interview mm. with has been knocked out of people in these theatre schools. And they're struggling to find the personality actors. And that's where you come into your own. Yeah, but it's a different decade as well. And they're all, you know, I'm not saying they all want fame and no backup. I'm not saying that at all because there's really hard working kids out there. I teach some of them and I see, you know, and it breaks your heart thinking you are really gifted. But but maybe you're too sensitive. You've got to have a bit of a backbone and a bit of a lack of fear to go. You know what? I'm not fabulous, but I'm here and I'm I'm going to work hard. But you know the managements are such now that they would rather take somebody less talented because it's commercial theatre. And they, you know, I, I was walking past when Mary Poppins was on, and this I was going to Les Mis, I think, at the time, and this five-year-old girl boy was saying to his mum who's the star of Mary who's the star of telly on Mary and you think well there you go you see everybody wants to see a star and that's fine mm. but it might be debasing if that star can't quite do it and Mary Poppins is the star that's why you're going to absolutely. see absolutely <laughs> so it's not somebody off the telly I don't care if somebody's off the telly doing whatever they have to do, but you, you better be good. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much for talking to us today. We must end speaking about uh, Le Cajou Faux, uh, yes. which I enjoyed on Broadway a couple of years ago. It's um, a very different play. It's um, intelligent, it's witty, it's deep, it's funny. It's got everything, really, to, to have a good night out in mm. the theatre. This is a very intimate version. I saw it at the Palladium. Again, that's massive, you know, loads of chorus boys. And the two-hander scenes, kind of, I was right at the back, kind of, 
got lost really and because the Playhouse Theatre is quite an intimate theatre you get the real kind of subtleties of the piece and it's about a marriage it doesn't matter if it's a gay marriage you know uh, kind of thing it's it's about love and and warmth and hope and it, it, it's absolutely delightful and the two lead boys you know Doug, Dougie Hodge and Dennis Lawson absolutely immaculate performances and it's a joy to be a part of it. I mean, I, I come into a nightclub scene at one point and I get really taken away by watching everything. And I think, oh my God, it's me. And it, you know, it's that good that you, you actually think you're in a club. It's a great night out and I'm not just selling it. I don't care, don't come st sit in and keep in the warmth for all I care. But it, it, honest to God, is worth it for those performances alone. And the Cajels are absolutely hardworking and funny. They, they can all act. Their legs are amazing. Um, they all look beautiful. It's it's a drag act club, and and it's about relationships, and uh, it's worth seeing it for that alone. Congratulations on being you. You're a true star, and it's always lovely to see you, whether it is in Lemmy's on the telly, or in Hairspray, or indeed this, because yeah, whether, you're whether I'm crap or not. <laughs> Don't put yourself up. <laughs> You've got the work and that's all that matters. Yeah, Don't tell them that, that, they'll get rid of you. Not bothered. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on. Tracy Bennett, the big star of Le Casual Faux. Thanks, love.